Oh, there you guys are. I'm glad we were able to meet up. And thanks for joining me on this beautiful day hike as we're going to unpack today my long distance ultralight day pack and the gear and equipment that I carry with me. And guys, my goal in this video is to not only highlight some gear modifications and tips and tricks that I'm looking forward to sharing with you that will help make your experience on trail just that much more enjoyable, but also new updates to gear and equipment I'm using that really help that experience and some tried and true classics that have been with me for the long haul. And I've had a few gear failures as well that I'm going to need your guys help with but also help you better filter that outdoor budget it's very easy to start seeing that requirement going up and up and oh my gosh I need to spend two thousand dollars to go hiking which is not at all the case because in reality you may not be spending that much trail time with that gear item I hope to help navigate you through that process so that you can make wise choices this outdoor season and not just blow your budget and remember the gear makes the experience more enjoyable but it's the experience itself in the amazing great outdoors that we're after and oh man the camera ain't gonna be doing that justice that is gorgeous man Whew. i like how i picked the steepest part of the trail start talking to you guys <laughs> now how about my survival pouch i've really tried to slim this down and is something that is stocked enough that I feel very comfortable on hikes like this, long distance, having the tools and supplies that I need if I had to spend a night in the outdoors. And when it comes to the survival kit, I got a six by six, 511. I wouldn't take a lot of time trying to like come up with the right pouch. I have probably a couple hundred dollars worth of pouches and it's, I found it's just easier to just go with, you know, simple. Everything that we have here, it's gonna weigh a total of about 2.7 pounds. Last I checked with all of these supplies. So we'll just run in through them here real quick. Big lighter with Gorilla Tape on it. Easy way to, you know, make the Gorilla Tape portable. Followed up by my Uberleben fire system. So I have the Tinder Wick with bellows. That's awesome. Fire steel. And then I swapped out the paracord for, uh, UST fire uh, cord so that has a, a wick inside there that I could use in a pinch um, to get a fire going. Then we have navigation and emergency uh, detection with my compass as well as emergency whistle and a mini mirror. I do masking tape over the mirror or you know some sort of tape, um, scotch tape, just to keep the mirror lens from getting scratched. And then when I if I ever need to use it, I can just peel it right off. Now you guys know me, I prefer hands-free illumination, so I have the under two ounce. Uh, Streamlight Bandit. That is micro USB rechargeable. I bring with me my anchor, um, little tube cigar anchor, basically, with all of my different cables so I could charge my phone, the headlamp, my Zolio satellite communicator, and anything else that I might have with me, any sort of tech, I could get about one charge with this little guy. Now I have these as a backup for my water purification systems, but I mean, if you're just on a budget, you can just do aqua tablets and you know easily purify water in any water bottle. So I always have a few of those with me. And guys, as we're breaking down all this gear and equipment, there will be links in the description below this video to all the stuff I'm talking about. So if you're interested in an item and wanna do a little bit more research and dive in, appreciate when you use those hyperlinks followed up by a bright bandana not only for signaling but also just hundreds of things you can do with a bandana i always have some gear aid tape which seems to be better for like packs and cloth than duct tape a uh, more permanent solution there and then a 99 cent rain poncho in case i forgot my raincoat for some reason or some sort of issue or run into somebody on the trail that didn't and just whatever uh, and again a simple way if rain is not really something that you run into a lot but it's better to have nothing better to have something than nothing then there you go and then a nice high-vis um, emergency blanket as well. And then for the last year, tool-wise, I've had this Victorinox uh, in the system. This is one of their Evo series. Good size blade, really nice saw to be able to do notches and, you know, little bushcraft type of finer cuts if necessary scissors and a few other implements on there and then i've been doing my sol um two-handed chainsaw this is much lighter more compact than a folding saw i prefer folding saws but for this system and high speed i'm not planning on doing woodscraft but in a pinch if i had to um you know to spend the night that is there for me and then i do have my uh, pocket sharpener from work sharp which is lighter and smaller than what we just saw with the sharp out pal and the full size guided sharpener but at least you could put an edge on my swiss army knife and pocket knife and other stuff that i have with me if necessary having the right apparel for the right environment when you're on trail 
is really important. And that's why I've been using a Merino wool 72 hour t-shirt designed by Proof, carried by Huckberry. And I'm glad they're today's sponsor of this video because they offer quite a bit in not only their 72 hour series, which has an epic 87% New Zealand sourced wool with 13% nylon blend. So it temperature regulates and feels so comfortable as your base layer with short sleeve or long sleeve variants. Perfect day to be wearing my proof long sleeve shirt. It was a little bit warm in the morning, but because of the wool, it breathes really nice and I didn't feel like I had to strip off anything. And now the a storm's coming in. We're getting to get some snow tonight. So it's raining slash snowing right now and it's keeping me warm. So it's doing that crossover job super well. Or if you wanna dress it up, you can throw on the 72 hour polo when style and performance are required. And for the last six months, I've been running these in tandem with the Proof Rover pants. That unlike other canvas work pants, these have a built-in moisture wicking technology that helps keep you dry without losing durability. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of the Adventure Focus Apparel designed by Proof. And so regardless if it's the Proof series or other excellent gear and equipment for your next adventure, I do invite you to go check out Huckberry. I'll have a link in the description below this video, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code, which goes towards your very first purchase. So hop on over there and check out what they got. Now I'm gonna jump into day packs. I'm gonna give you a couple suggestions. I'm not gonna say like, this is the pack that you have to get because everybody's you know situation and scenario is different. For me personally, I found usually like 25 to 30 is normally what I would gravitate to. Uh, I'm trying to slim that down. That's why I'm actually hiking today with a hyperlight. I believe it's the daybreak or daybreaker, which is like 20 with the exterior pockets, 20 liter. Um, so, I mean, if you're willing to spend the, the money hyperlight, if you want to cut every single ounce is amazing. Or if you want amazing yoke and load bearing capability, then I, I've yet to find one that can really compete with Mystery Ranch and their Cooley series particularly. They now, uh, I've used my older 25 liter, which has been amazing for years now on hikes like this. Uh, now I know that they have the 20 and the 30, they've updated it so you can kind of hone in. If you are pretty minimal, probably the 20, if you tend to carry more, you're you know carrying supplies for the family, then that 30 liter would be a better scenario. And then if you're on the more budget and you need to update your pack, Gregory is a great option. I'm actually gonna try and do a uh, review and a test on one other day packs. I'll be annotating them in right now. Uh, I think it's like, might even be like 70 bucks or something for around 20 uh, liters you can usually score some good day packs for between like 80 and 120 bucks. And this one, I'm gonna need some help from you guys. We're talking about hydration. Okay, so water purification. We got a lot of moving parts here that I'll try and breeze through. The first issue I have is with my Catanine Be Free. I was actually gonna take this on this hike because I wasn't expecting to really run into water. I didn't feel like I needed to purify it, but you know, maybe if there was that option, I'd, I'd have it better than nothing. And I like how quick and easy it is to use and how compact it is. But the night before, it sprung a leak and was not filtering quickly at all so like just the whole system was like not operating as it should i cleaned it out made sure it was all good it's just like kind of failed and just fell flat for me so i was really frustrated with that so if you guys have ideas on not only how to fix that and or a better system i mean i have the platypus system here which is great it is a good lightweight more inexpensive filtration system but it's got a lot of moving parts you got to like scoop up and then attach and then do this and then disconnect and all these things so it just slows down the process of filtration and it just has a lot of more cumbersome and moving parts to it so ultimately on that day i took you know that we're seeing i took this my ultralight grail press it's the most consistent it's the most reliable i've used it for years in all sorts of different scenarios the grail family that never let me down backpacking hiking and so i went with it worked out great for, for lighter weight scenarios that's obviously an option for more of just like a dedicated system you got the geo press and then you always have the titanium version as well if you want to combine your cookware and your filtration into one housing you got that option so i mean there's a lot to think about for me personally it, i just keep on going back to the grail because of the consistency reliability and what it can do even though it is a little bit heavier and bulkier than other systems let me know what you guys think
So then for the hydration itself, when you're on trail, we got two options. First off, if I'm gonna go with a water bladder, it's been sourced for years and I'm sticking with that. I have so many different sizes. This is actually like a mini one that I use, let my boys use a lot, like 40 ounces. But these are really well designed. They have all, all the way up to like over 100 ounces, uh, different variants, lots of great attachment points, very well built, don't have the weird like plasticky taste and also have a system inside that layers the bag to help fight against bacterial buildup and that type of stuff and really um really well priced as well so uh, the source system is my go-to if i need a water bladder in certain scenarios i totally go with a water bladder particularly if i'm like mountain biking or if there's a scenario where i just need to carry tons and tons of water and i know there's going to be zero water where i'm going then i'll tend to gravitate more to a water bladder now if i'm not like on this last hike i go with what you guys have heard about a lot and there's a reason for it my hard side hydration system so this gives you that hands-free capability but you can do it on a exterior water bottle so this is the 28 millimeter mouth so that'll fit on smart water bottles this is a 50 ounce fuji and it makes it really easy to fill up know where your water is reload if you know you need to water purify that's what i did and, and do do that and gets it outside of the bag so that you can have more space inside. There's a lot of versatility. You can also attach these to your wide mouth uh, Nalgene's that are 32 or 48 ounces. So gives you a lot of versatility in that way. And so I literally just transition between the two depending on the trail environment and the activity that day. And to give you a little bit of a reference point on weight, um, this includes everything you're seeing today and 70 ounces of water food all that my pack weighed 12 pounds then i did put all of my camera gear and equipment for filming and uh, filming supplies for for the video and then that added another like four pounds um to the pack so i'm rocking like 17 16 pounds total uh and, but for those of you who are not videographers we'd be looking at about 12 pounds total weight including food and water and guys if you're enjoying this type of content i invite you to hit that like button and to subscribe make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified every week when i put up new content just like this so i believe every time you go into the outdoors it's important it's vital that you have some form of an edge tool regardless if it's at minimum like a swiss army knife or a multi-tool some sort of pocket knife or ultimately for me it's usually a pocket knife a multi-tool and a fixed blade it just depends on what i'm planning on doing that day and so if you're gonna go with a pocket knife the original triad series from cold steel i think is probably my favorite and most reliable and most chosen uh, series of blades. Basically, if it has a triad lock on it, it's so strong. I batoned with them. They're super reliable and they have a lot to offer and they're not super expensive if you accidentally do end up losing it on trail, which I've never done in my life, but that could happen. I mean, the Voyager drop point here, I think I picked up for like 60 bucks. Excellent outdoor folder. Could get a lot of tasks done, but you can, 35 bucks, you know, you can get um, a fin wolf, which is like a folding Mora, or you can go all out and get like an AD10 cold steel, which is like a folding Becker BK2 basically. And, and, and there's tons of variants in between. So if you're looking and needing like an outdoor pocket knife, that's normally what I gravitate to more than any other brand, more than any other, you know, like style, just because of the value to performance to strength. Now for lightweight, you could go with something like a Mora, uh, and that is extremely inexpensive and a very reliable fixed blade option. But I always like something a little bit more substantial, particularly when I'm going into environments I'm not super familiar with, like this trail. I have not done this particular trail before. Uh, and so I'm rocking the line steel, full tank constructed T5. So this is just over five inches, um, you know, three sixteenths, very durable can do a lot of work for me got a 90 degree spine off the back so i could throw sparks and get a fire going if i had to um and uh, it's not as big as a tool that i would take if i was going on like an outing for bushcraft and shelter building but in a pinch i can do a lot with a blade of this size and that doesn't mean like that's the knife i take every time i have so many knives but that's kind of the size range kind of you know like a, a five to six inch and trying to get under um or at 12 ounces is kind of my ideal weight range for a fixed blade when i'm doing a hike like this footwear your precious feetsies 
So I have not progressed to a place where I can do trail runners yet. I know some people do. I just like the extra kind of protection around the ankle, not only in just like rolling, because I think they've actually done studies where mid or high top boots don't really help that much in giving stability to your ankle. But it just, you know, it just kind of protects you a little bit more if you're trudging through different debris and things like that. So it's nice to have that. Um, so I usually go mid top, always trying to cut weight. But basically the two things that I look for is um, some sort of shank, if at all possible, in the footbed, just in the environment that I'm in, in the Rocky Mountains with rocks. Having some form of a shank really does help a lot. It just doesn't fatigue your foot as much if you're on really rocky terrain. And then second to that is in the when I'm in the Rockies, I actually don't prefer waterproof boots. I'd rather have the breathability of things dry out so quick and we just don't have a lot of water. But when I was like in Florida, Alabama, the Carolinas hiking and trekking, having waterproof was really important. And I was glad I had waterproof boots. And in the wintertime, I do that with the snow, I have waterproof. But summertime hiking, at least in drier climates, I don't see a need to have a waterproof boot. It just makes your feet hotter. So that's my experience. What are you guys using? Do you use trail runners? Or do you still do mid top boots of some kind? And if you're kind of starting from scratch, uh, a few options I could point you in the right direction for a no brainer are Moabs from Merrill. They have all kinds of variants and versions, waterproof, non, low top, high top, you know, mid top. There's a ton out there and they're really reasonably priced and hold up pretty well. Uh, and then if you wanna kinda go on the other side of the spectrum, I love my Solomons. Um, I have an XA Force version, but there are lots of different like Solomon versions out there that are excellent and then Topo. I've been using my Topo Ventura's really large toe box. Uh, and those things are amazing, uh, really, really cool. And basically took me across the country when we were full-time RVing. And that was my dedicated hiking boot for the year. Okay, so one of the scenarios I need your help with is sustenance on trail. You know, 1,500 feet of elevation gain is what I'm doing today. And by the time we get back to the car, it's gonna probably be 9.8, maybe even 10, who knows, miles that I'll be doing. So, I mean, I'm burning a lot of calories and I just hate the majority of the supplies that I take with me. You know, it's usually just granola bars and cliff bars and you know, there's, those all have their place, but they just get boring. A lot of them are, you know, soy based, which I'm trying to kind of get away from and uh, just really trying to find some good, healthy, um, high energy, high protein, you know, sources of food for on trail. So I want to know if you guys have ideas or solutions um, for me. Leave a comment below and for the community watching, uh, I really look forward to hearing any ideas that you guys have. So first gear item and mod comes into play in the sense of keeping yourself protected and safe when you're on the trail, regardless if it's from the four-legged or two-legged type of animal. And the easiest way to do that is with a can of bear spray. Now, it's good to be familiar with how a can, can of bear spray operates, the distance, and how long it will shoot. <laughs> My backup GoPro totally looked like something in the background, like someone's following me, that's hilarious. <laughs> and just be familiar with the operation of a can of bear spray. So to make this accessible, I've used Ranger bands, which are just souped up rubber bands with these polymer tabs that just really make it easy to strap and then disconnect and it locks it into place right there. And make sure to always double check your expiration dates. I got one more year on this particular can. So having quick access and mounting it properly, super important, lots of great pouches out there for the bear spray canisters. Regardless of how you do it, just have it mounted easily and accessibly. Always good to have a bear bell with you. Now trekking poles are really interesting for me. Um, I see value in them, but I'm usually always filming or I have Tommy the trail dog with me and they're kind of cumbersome. So what I found I use a lot is this monopod from Mountain Smith has uh, an attachment for your cameras, GoPros, whatever you would like. And it also comes with a rubber cap that you screw on if you don't need that. And it is a full size trekking pole. I mean, it's designed as a trekking pole, but it works also as a selfie stick or a monopod for filming if you need to. And that has worked really well for me. All right, we gotta talk med kits. I'm not gonna unpack my entire med kit. I have tons of videos on that. 
I'm just gonna highlight a few things and just give you a few concepts. Know that I am not a professional medical advisor, do all this at your own risk, and ultimately take some classes, you know, um, do a couple trauma courses. A lot of them are free or very inexpensive to better know how to take care of yourself or people that you may run into on trail. For me, I build out my own medical kits. I don't buy off the shelf medical kits. Um, I just found that I can fine tune my med kits better to my needs and get higher quality stuff for the same price or even save myself a little bit of money when I build them out myself and I know I'm getting like the best items. It takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of research, but it's well worth that type of investment. And if I could recommend a few items to you, one would be a SWAT T tourniquet, which is a giant rubber band basically. And you can use it as a compress or a tourniquet. I have actually used one of those to help stabilize a friend of mine that the doctor said if we hadn't used that, he probably would have bled out by the time we had gotten to the hospital. So I swear by those things. And they work really well for pets and for children where the full-blown cat tourniquets may not fit on your pets or on your kids' you know, appendages. So one of those, a cat, uh, cat tourniquet as well. And then um, an antihistamine as well as painkillers just to help with allergic reactions or headaches, you know, altitude sickness, whatever it would be. And then some sort of coagulant to help um, stop bleeding if there's a, a massive gash wound. So having those type of um, supplies and knowing how to use them properly is super important. Let's talk about protection from the elements. I always have some form of leather palmed gloves so I could work around a fire if I had to handle heavier stuff uh, and just protect those hands, you know, if I had to scramble, whatever. So I always have something like that with me. Those happen to be mechanics gloves. And then I always have some form of a beanie. You just never know. And it's a quick way to keep yourself warm and without having to, you know, carry a bunch of different, you know, layers and coats. Now for rain, I mean, if you're on a tight budget, there's nothing wrong with a set of frog togs. These are like a $15 poncho. These things are awesome. Pretty compact, lightweight, um, reusable, definitely better than like the 99 cent one in my you know emergency kit over there and could do a lot for you in a lot of different scenarios. So that, you know, if you're on a budget or just don't experience a lot of weather outside of just sun, that's a great option. Now for me, I have two options here. For my Ferrasi hoodie, amazing, been with me for eight years. I love this. It's water resistant, wind resistant, and uh, is just a great kind of outer shell. It can last for about 10 minutes in a downpour before it starts to soak through. They can block the rain or the wind, excuse me. And I layer up in the winter time and then just use this in the summertime if I need it. But because I'm on trail all the time, I did invest in a $250 outdoor research for a two rain jacket that is Gore-Tex has a lot of features, a lot of capability. You can zip, unzip it into basically a poncho and then zip back down to a raincoat. Very modular, got a lot of capability there. And I got that because I'm just on trail all the time and I just saw the need for it. But for a lot of you, again, a $10, $15 frog tog would be all you need for actual like rain protection. So let me know what you guys think about this and if there's a particular clothing item that you use to protect yourself in the elements. All right, guys, let's talk trail tech real quick. And I do wanna know in the comments below, do you take, you know, do you see value in technology and having things like what I'm gonna highlight really quick for you uh, with you on trail or not? Um, you know, I started out with no tech and over the years have updated and upgraded and I see a lot of value in having tech like this. So the first is recommended by you guys and I'm so thankful for it, my Garmin Instinct. This is the non-solar version. Uh, I hiked eight days ago uh, when I'm filming this part and I still have two bars on my watch. So just giving you a little idea there. Uh, if But I do not do emails and like text on this. If you were to do a lot of that and you like that on your smartwatch, probably go with the solar version. For me, I'm using it mainly for GPS coordinates. It has its compass on there and elevation, mileage, you know, like that type of stuff is what I use it for my heart rate. And, you know, just works super well. And I'm glad to have that when I'm on trail, just helps a lot and gives it like an extra layer of peace of mind with the navigation as well as, you know, distance and just where I'm at. Then two-way communication has really been a boon on many different trips with, you know, multiple people. My brother and I used it, a group went off to go fishing three miles away over two ridge lines and in another bowl in Wyoming through forested you know, terrain. And we were able to communicate. If someone got injured, we would have been able to say what's up. You know, We knew when they were coming back to the main location, all that, I mean, just it's great to have something like that um, and have used this a bunch. And yeah, just if you're with a group, having some form of 
Two-way communication is great. These Rocky Talkies with the lithium battery last forever and have performed super well and are much more durable than just, you know, like a $20 one you're gonna pick up at Walmart. Then finally, my Zilio satellite communicator, just knowing like on this hike, you know, going almost 10 miles by myself, just having that peace of mind to hit that SOS button if I get injured, if there's a scenario where I get lost in some new terrain and know that I can, you know, reach out to first responders and get help just gives my wife and my family peace of mind to know that I'm going to be okay and myself just an extra layer of confidence so I can go further, trek farther, and try new places that maybe I'd be a little sketchy to do by myself. So it allows me to adventure more and in different terrain that I may not always feel comfortable by myself doing. We made it. My watch says 9.7 miles. It's a little bit under than what all trails said, so that's nice. So guys, thanks for joining me today. I hope it's been informative, entertaining, and helped you out to just get pumped to get out here on the trails this summer and to have the proper gear and equipment for your adventures. I invite you to check out the other video popping up to again, subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. I'll see you out there.